Hi guys, today we're going to be doing a lens shootout between the Sigma 150 to 600 mm f5 to 6.3 contemporary lens versus the Sport equivalent. And I'm going to start right now. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is James and if it is the very first time to this channel and you want to learn all about Photoshop, Lightroom and everything photography related, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. So in this video guys we're going to be doing a lens shootout between these two super mega zoom lenses. The Sigma 150-600mm f5-6.3 to contemporary lens versus the Sport equivalent. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this review down into 15 different sections so we can work out what lens is best at different criteria. And then we'll do an overview to work out what lens is best out of these two. Now, if you want to have a look at an in-depth real world review of each of these two lenses, I've already created reviews on them. So if you're interested in the Sport or the Contemporary and you're not interested in the comparison, then go ahead and watch those videos. But today it's just going to be a comparison between these two to work out what lens is best out of these two lenses. So without further ado guys, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is the build quality of both of these lenses. Now ever since Sigma created their art lens back in 2016 when they released their brand new 35mm f1.4 prime lens, the build quality of Sigma lenses have jumped up immensely. And I must say, I prefer the build quality of most Sigma lenses over the Canon, Nikon and Sony counterparts. They use these really nice premium metal and magnesium construction. And I must say, this Sigma lens here, the Sport version, really does show that in its build quality. It is made out of really heavy but really premium materials. And I must say, even the rubber of the focus ring and the zoom ring are exceptional build quality. But when it comes over to the contemporary version, the build quality is there, but it just isn't as good as the sport version. I find that the focus ring is a little bit too small, and I also find the zoom ring is a little bit too large compared to the sport version. I must say, when you pick both of these up, you'll really notice the build quality of the sport version is a lot better than the contemporary version. But again, this lens is also a lot heavier, so do take that into consideration. So the check mark is gonna be going to the sport lens in this round. So the next thing I'm going to be looking at is the f-stop or the apertures that these both lens has. Now both of these lenses have got identical variable apertures which means that they as you zoom the aperture changes and both of these lenses are both f5 to 6.3 and when I measured these uh, I did a, pro uh, a lens to lens comparison and I noticed no difference in any of the brightness of each of the photos at both each apertures so these lenses are identical in this particular aspect so both of these lenses get a check mark in this round. So the next thing I'm going to be looking at is the sharpness of both of these lenses. Now because these are zoom lenses, I'm going to measure them at their minimum and maximum focal distance. Now this obviously zooms from 150, which is telephoto, to 600 millimeters, which is super telephoto. So these are really important to get the sharpness just right, especially as you've got the mega zoom, you're gonna to need to have image stabilization to create a sharp image. And both of these lenses have image stabilization to stabilize the footage. But I would say out of the two, the sport version does have sharper photos, especially at 600 millimeters because that's the reason you're going to be buying this lens. It's not necessarily the 150, it's the 600. A very few lenses within the price point have that ability. So having a sharp 600mm is incredibly important. And I must say the sport equivalent really does show that in the sharpness of the photos. Now they are similar, but if you did do a uh, apples to apples comparison, you will notice a lot sharper quality from the sport lens. So the check mark again goes to the sport lens in this round. So the next thing I'm going to be talking about is lens flaring and how do these lenses compare when it comes to lens flaring. Now because these are both super mega zoom lenses, 
Both of these suffer quite bad with lens flaring. And you can just see by the size of the front element, you can really see how much lens flaring these lenses would suffer from. Now, there are a few things you can mitigate uh, lens flaring. Uh, one of them is buying a super multi-coated UV filter. Uh, this can help as well with the uh, lens hoods that both of these lenses have. So I would highly recommend buying two of these, especially if you're shooting in bright sunshine or maybe shooting in or towards the sky, maybe if you're taking photos of air shows. Now, there are a little bit of a difference between the two lenses. This one has two UD elements and this has three, but I must say there isn't a large difference within the lens flaring. I would highly recommend using both lens hoods and possible, if you can get one, a UV or circular polarizer filter to reduce lens flaring. But again, if you do point these anywhere near the sun, and I mean almost anywhere, you are going to get quite a low contrast and quite bad flaring. And the flaring doesn't look great, again, because the amount of elements that these both lenses have. But out of the two, the sport lens is better. So that's the one I'm gonna be giving a check mark in this round. So the next thing I'm going to be talking about is chromatic aberration or color fringing. This is where you get a funny line on high contrast edges, often purple, green, or sometimes even magenta. Now, both of these lenses do suffer from a little bit of chromatic aberration, especially at 150 millimeters. But if you go ahead and zoom all the way into 600 millimeters, the chromatic aberration is almost non-existent, even on high contrast edges. But if again, if I did an apples to apples comparison, I would say that the the contemporary version suffers just a little bit worse when it comes to chromatic aberration, but both of these are fairly good at mitigating the issue. So I am again going to be giving the uh, sport lens the check mark within this round. So the next thing I'm going to be looking at is distortion and vignetting from both of these lenses. Now distortion is where you get pin cushion or barrel distortion and vignetting is when you get dark corners. And because of the high aperture nature of both of these lenses, both of them don't really necessarily suffer from vignetting, especially if you stop it down from anything above f6 which if you have it zoomed at full 6.3 is actually higher than that already so both of these lenses are fairly good with vignetting but with distortion again because these are super mega zoom lenses distortion is really non-existent as well so i'm going to be giving a check mark to both of these lenses as they're great if you're after a lens that doesn't suffer from distortion and doesn't suffer from vignetting So after talking about all of the uh, image quality, let's have a look at just the overall image quality and what mark will I give each of these lenses? Well, in my real world review, both of these lenses came fairly on top when it comes to image quality. I was really happy with the images that I took, especially with the sport lens. I noticed that the images were a lot sharper and I just found that the overall image stabilization of the sport lens was a little bit better, even though the image stabilization system is the same. So I'm not too sure why I preferred the sport lens but I just happened to have better photos when I was using it so again it came down to personal preference but in my opinion I prefer the sport lens when it comes to image quality so that's the lens I'm going to be giving the check mark to in this round So the next thing I'm going to be looking at is the size of both of these lenses. And because these are both super mega zoom lenses, they are quite large, but there is a slight difference. If we compare the contemporary versus the sport, the contemporary comes in at a max height of 26 centimeters, and it comes to almost 30 centimeters when you go ahead and put the lens hood on. But obviously you can take the lens hood off when you're in your bag. But I must say the increased size of the sport lens does make it a monster lens, coming in at 29 centimeters, which is absolutely massive. And if you go ahead and zoom it all the way out, you'll see that this lens really is probably one of the biggest lenses you'll ever own. So because of that, this particular round, I'm gonna be giving it to the Contemporary because the Contemporary is a lot smaller and a lot more compact and it will fit into most camera bags where the sport lens really is really, really big. And also you can't remove the uh, tripod collar here where you can on the Contemporary. So this compacts down also a lot smaller. So in this round, the Contemporary wins. 
So the next thing I'm going to be looking at is the filter thread size and how much are each of the filters. Now again, because these are super mega zoom lenses, the filters are naturally gonna be quite large. And with these lenses, there is no exception. This lens has a 95 millimeter filter thread where this lens has a whopping 105 millimeter filter thread. So to be honest, both of these lenses are gonna be difficult to find a UV filter. Now, this is the UV filter for the 95 millimeters and this set me back 159 pounds. And if you wanted to get the equivalent for the 105, you're gonna be looking at around 200 to 300 pounds depending on what brand. And all of them are gonna be super multi-coated either UV or again, circular polarizers. So if you are on a tight budget and you are after a lens that's fairly cheap with fairly cheap UV filters, the sport lens is not necessarily gonna be the one for you. And you're going to want to buy the contemporary because it has got an ever so slight smaller filter size, which will reduce the price almost by about 50 pounds in this respect. So for this round, the contemporary wins again. So the next thing I'm going to be talking about is the weight of each of these two lenses. Now, because they're both super mega zoom lenses, they're not going to be light, but one is a lot heavier than the other. So let's talk about the contemporary. Because it's made out of more of a premium plastic than a more of a metal construction, it is a little bit lighter, coming in at just 1.9 kilograms. Now it is uh, a, a lot heavier than most lenses, but because it's got that super mega zoom aspect, all lenses around this kind of uh, focal length are going to be heavy, but it's nowhere near as heavy as the Monster Sport Lens, coming in at 2.8 kilos. But again, this is just due to the more kind of premium materials that the Sport Lens offers. I must say, lugging both of these around, it is a lot heavier to carry, especially long distances, carrying the Sport Lens. So if you are someone that's after a nice, light, compact lens that has got that super mega zoom aspect, the contemporary version will be a lot better for you. Another great thing about the contemporary version when it comes to weight is you can remove the tripod color, where you can't remove the tripod color on the sport lens, which really does reduce the weight down by quite a considerable amount. So this check mark definitely goes to the contemporary lens as the sport lens really is heavy. So the next thing I'm gonna be talking about is how well these lenses perform in video and how easy to do focus pulls using the full-time manual focus of both of these lenses. Now, both of these lenses do have full-time manual focusing, which means when it's in automatic mode, it doesn't matter when you touch the focus ring, it will allow you to change. And also both of these lenses also have focus windows. So you can actually see at what distance each of the lenses focus at, but one has a lot better focus ring than the other. As you can see here, we've got quite a small focus ring on the contemporary version. And after a while, it does get a little Little bit stiff but as you can see on the sport lens it is a lot wider and a lot easier to turn and it's got this more rubber construction instead of this kind of plastic feel to it so if you are more of a video goer and you're after a lens that really does perform in video that does have this super mega zoom aspect the sport lens is definitely going to be easier to use and doing focus pulls is a lot easier now both of these lenses don't really have a macro aspect so both of these lenses have around about 2.8 meters minimal focal distance so i wouldn't recommend these these lenses for video but if you were going to use them the sport lens is a lot easier so that's the lens that will get the check mark in this round So the next thing I'm gonna be talking about is the focus breathing and do these lenses suffer from it? So focus breathing, just to recap, is basically when you're at a certain focal distance, so say 150 millimeters, and you go ahead and zoom from a close subject to a further away subject, sometimes it can either zoom out or zoom in. Now, because of both of these lenses don't have uh, external focusing, so that means that the lens at the end doesn't necessarily zoom in and zoom out, it's all built within the lens itself, it means these lenses don't really suffer from focused breathing. And when I tested it, they were very minimal and both of them performed almost identically. So I'm gonna be giving a check mark to both of these lenses. Uh, both of these lenses don't necessarily suffer from very bad focused breathing. And it's not something you're ever going to really notice, especially if you're doing video work. So the next thing I'm going to be talking about is how quick each of these lenses are when it comes to focusing. Now, because of these both are super mega zooms, both of them are regarded as one of the quickest super mega zoom lenses, especially for how quick and precise the focus motor is. But out of the two, which one is better? Well, out of the test, there wasn't much of a difference, especially in bright sunlight. But where the difference really started to show was when it got to 
dark or when it was more low light and the sport lens really did pull out a big advantage it was a lot more precise and a lot quicker especially in low light conditions i was out in woburn until almost dusk uh, taking photos of the deer and i noticed a massive increase in speed especially in low light conditions so the sport lens is a lot better for overall speed of the focus motor but the uh, contemporary version isn't necessarily slow in comparison but because the sport lens did perform better for me this is the lens i'm going to be giving the check mark to in this round So the next thing I'm going to be talking about is what sounds these two lenses make when the image stabilization is on and when you're using the focusing. Now both of these lenses are quite loud. I must say if you are going to be using the internal microphone of your camera, both of the audio from both of these lenses are going to be almost useless. Uh, it is quite overwhelming the sound, especially when the image stabilization is on. It makes this ticking whirring sound which is very off putting. So definitely use either a lapel mic or uh, some kind of external microphone such as a shotgun microphone to mitigate that noise. But which one is quieter? Well to be honest out of the two I did feel that the contemporary lens was a little bit louder especially when it came to focusing uh, but the image stabilization sounds uh, were very similar so for this round I'm going to be giving it to the sport lens but I would say both of these lenses aren't necessarily great for video especially in the sound aspect of it so definitely buy an external microphone if you are after this lens for sound but the check mark is going to be going to the sport lens So last but most importantly is the price and which lens is better value for money. To be honest, both of these lenses are absolutely amazing when it comes to price. Both of these lenses are way, way cheaper than the competitor lenses on the market, especially if you have a look at any of the Canon super mega zooms, Sony or even the Nikon ones. So either of these two lenses will offer you great value for money, but one that stands out in particular. The sport lens comes in around £1,249, but where the real saving is, is if you buy the contemporary version. Coming in under £1,000 at £749, which is amazing saving, especially if you're not necessarily interested in any of the kind of weather sealing that this lens offers. This lens is absolutely amazing value for money and is probably one of my favourite lenses under £1,000, which makes this lens one of the best lenses of 2020 in my regard. So for that reason, this is where the check mark will be going in this round. Brilliant, and there we go guys. So there is my lens review of each of these two lenses. And both of these lenses did score very high. Uh, the contemporary version scored nine out of 15, where the sport lens scored 10 out of 15. So out of the two, I would highly recommend the sport lens. But again, if you are more budget orientated, the contemporary lens really is an absolute great lens. But again, out of the two, if I had to pick, I would pick the sport lens over the contemporary as the image stabilization, I found the sharpness and also the chromatic aberration was a lot more improved over the contemporary. But again, it is a little bit more money, so do take that into consideration. And remember, the absolute massive front element, do save a little bit of money. If you are want to protect it, I definitely recommend getting yourself a UV filter. Again, guys, if you want to like, comment and subscribe to my channel, it really, really does help my channel grow. Also, if you want to hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my latest content. But until next time, guys, keep creating.